Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar. We have a very special guest with us today. This is Sam Fine. He's an Albany County legislator. So welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you, Rabbi. Always happy to be here. Well, you're a regular guest every few years, I guess. And But there's always something new happening in legislation. There's always soon new bills coming out at the assembly, or I think we'll go on to know what's really uh, happening in the Albany County, something new and exciting. Well, so we just had uh, elections. Um, I was reelected uh, without you an opponent. You have to give you a mazel tov. No <laughs> opponents, you. that's pretty good. No opponents this Shelsea, time. Shelsey, you're doing time. a good job. Though. Yeah, I guess that's no. a testament to it. So, um, But yes, we're going into another legislative session, four-year terms. And uh, we are excited uh, about the possibilities. I mean, I think we see, we've seen an uptick in a lot of problems. I represent the South End, uh, part of Arbor Hill, downtown Albany. You know, we're seeing an increase in, in homelessness, you know, a lot of concerns about public safety and crime. Well, you know what I saw recently yeah. that it used to be the McDonald's and the people should know about it and Madison and... Pearl. Pearl. Yeah. And then it turned to a co-op, which I never went to. I didn't go to the McDonald's either. Yeah. You might know. But all right. But, um, you know, it's. I know that's an issue there for more of the inner city where they have to go miles away. You know, a lot of people don't have cars to just go shopping. Yeah. You know, the, so that's an issue. Yeah, it's a, it's a major issue. You know, we had a lot of hopes there. We had, um, it was, it was a uh, non-profit grocery store that opened, but it just... There were there were some financial issues and they weren't able to make it, you know. But this is often when what happens when you have very low income neighborhood. There's just not a lot of resources there, you know. Whether it's a grocery store or other businesses, there's not a lot of you know economic vibrancy. The business side, also the Shoprite, I mean, which is a gigantic corporation, yeah. just said they couldn't make it in the capital district either. I mean, it's just a hard business climate, I guess. And yeah, I mean, from what I hear, grocery stores have uh, very small profit margins. Yeah, so that's yeah. difficult. You know, you're talking about that is just that, uh, you know, I, I was just talking about going for a few miles. I know one of the legislations I th thought I saw that you had was like the bus ride should be free. Yes. And uh, my wife's a social worker. She has an MSW, and she, you know, I said, oh, you know, look at that, Sam's in for and she says, oh, I agree with that right away, because I'm mean, not everybody, but for the most part, who's going on the buses? I don't have statistics, but, you know, people don't have a car, which means they don't have that much money, which means that if they're making a minimum wage and trying to get to the, to a job, you're just really cutting them. I mean, they're just yeah. uh, putting their nose above water, and then now you're cutting down even their pay down to another few dollars a day. Well, you're absolutely right, and you know, usually I have to really make the case in an interview for it, yeah, so I appreciate yeah. you, you making the case for me. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, another stat I want to throw out there, um, the CDTA gets only about 20% of the revenue from fares. Really? So the rest, I did it now. Yeah. That's interesting. The rest of it is already subsidized by government. Um, and yeah, the statistics are a significant uh, majority uh, of people who ride the bus you know, are, are low, lower income people. So they make a real difference. But I want to say, so, you know, we've been pushing this idea of a fare-free bus system, but we're also at the same time pushing for some incremental change. I want to make it free for everyone who's on SNAP, um, on food stamps. Yeah, right. And we've been in con conversations with CDTA, and, you know, I, I think there's a real possibility that we can make this happen really? in the next year or so. I think that's good, you yeah, know. Uh, again, I mean, I... You know, I'm a rabbi, I'm not a social worker, but I, sometimes yeah. I say to my wife, I says, yeah, I should get a certificate for being a social worker because, you know, people come to the rabbi and we just, just even now, just to today, set up somewhere, I can't pay the rent. So she went around and, you know, we went through a friend of the congregation and he had some rental properties and, and found a low-income property or he would have been out in the street. So a lot of, really what I do is a little social work. You know, the Chabad has a, kosher pantry and it's unbelievable i mean to, to me it is that 180 people i mean i know there's a lot of people need food on the other hand that there's a lot of uh jewish people you know and i never knew that but you know people are just trying to make ends meet there's inflation going yeah. on with food and so that cuts into the budget so i just uh know that you know i feel for the 
you know, I just don't have the big rich congregation. Uh, we take in everybody that's Chabad, no matter who they are, what yeah. they are, if they can't pay, fine, just come on over. And like I say, we have a helping hand to the unfortunate people. But I know that's really, well, that's your constituency that, yeah. that lead that on, and you're in the forefront of that. And that's, I want to say, that's what's great about Chabad. You know, you don't have to have a ticket to go to services. Yeah. They, there was a Chabad ad, um, one of the Chabad somewhere, that, that kind of made fun of the fact that, you know, a lot of synagogues, you have to have a ticket, and there's a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where Larry David scalped some tickets for a few hundred dollars yeah. uh, by holidays, so yeah. you don't have to do that here. Really? I never saw that. I'll have to see that myself. But you're right. I mean, uh, throughout all the years that have been around, many people have been just turned off. They tell me, you know, uh, they say, well, you know, I just want to pray, you know, what's the big deal? No, no, you need a ticket and you pay big money. I mean, you know, people, not everybody has money. It says, well, I can go to a Yankees game for, <laughs> for the, you know, season's tickets for that. And, um, you know, it turns people off and we want everybody to feel welcome. If they can afford it, fine. And if not, that's fine yeah. too. But, uh, yeah, I do want to say, yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the people who are housing insecure, who are going hungry, you just can't afford to pay the bills week to week. A lot of them live in my district. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of them reach out as well when they're struggling to find an apartment or they, you know, lost their job and they're going to get evicted. And so, you know, oftentimes it's it's us in government or sometimes uh, Jewish organizations, other religious organizations or community organizations trying to fill that gap, which is important. But we also need to change the way the system works because a lot of people, they don't have, they don't know who to reach out to. They're not able to get help. So we got to and also, you know, one system. of the things that I try to help people with is that once I help someone with forms, and they just wanted, you know, they had to fill out so many forms and so many things. And, well, wouldn't you just say I'm poor and I, you know, one page, and they had to fill out so many things for Medicare and all this kind of different food stamps and have to go in line. And in a way that I, you know, again, I don't have statistics, but people that are homeless or some. Maybe you say, well, there's so many different kind of subsidies that to help, but who wants to go through the rigmarole or yeah. they're, they're depressed or unfortunately there's a lot of drug use. They just, I don't want to wait in line for an hour and I just don't want just to get some food and it yeah. makes them homeless. So, you know, again, you say you're Jewish. It's interesting um, that I know that there aren't that many Jews. Again, I don't have statistics either in where your district is in here. You know, you're a Jewish person, but um, I guess that goes with your Jewish values that, you know, to help people out, again, as we're saying, no matter who you are and where you're from, but just to help out. So I, And they obviously respect you if they don't even run up anybody against you, so they must respect what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do represent um, the historic, one of the historic Jewish communities in Albany, the South End, uh, where there used to be a lot of Jews, but... Sadly, there aren't, aren't many Jews there anymore. But that's also, that's, that's what happens in America. You know, different immigrant and ethnic groups come in, they, they make it, they move out, new, new groups come in, and your neighborhoods continue to thrive in different ways. Um, but yeah, a lot of, as you're saying, you know, a, lot, a lot of these values of, that, you know, we need to, I know this term's overused a lot, but tikkun olam, repairing the world, you know, we have to make the world a better place for everyone. That's what we should, we should do as Jews. Yeah, so that's, it shows your Jewish values are respected in, you know, in all neighborhoods. I mean, that's really a Jewish value of helping the unfortunate, because it is really uh, Jewish in Torah. There's so many things in, in Torah that charity, uh, clothe people, feed people, help them out here, help them out there, if they read through the Chumash, the Bible, and so many of the laws, and that's really... Uh, Jewish people, I always say, in the forefront, really, of course, there's the heart fund, the lung fund, you know, there's so many funds going on. On the other hand, uh, you know, at the beginning of America, there really was, weren't these things, and it was the Jewish people, again, at the forefront of saying, hey, if people need help, then you help them, and if they can't work, all right, you still feed them, you don't let them starve, you know, look at yeah. Jamestown, you know, if you can't work, the heck with you, you know, and it's not a Jewish value at all. Yeah, well, I, I want to... um. Uh, to say so, my great uncle uh, Leonard Fine went by Label Fine. He started an organization, Mazon, uh, a Where Jewish response to hunger. I didn't know, I didn't know he started that. Yeah, he was he was the that, founder of it. Oh, there, no, I know it's a and, famous, you know, Mazon's yeah. a big a big organization. 
they've uh, fed millions of people. They feed everyone, Jews and non-Jews. And uh, I mean, the idea started because he saw a lot of a lot of Jews had you know a lot of money and were throwing these extravagant celebrations like bar mitzvahs, weddings. And he said, you know what? It's kind of it seems wrong that we throw such extravagant parties while there's so many people who don't even have food on the table. So said, it started with this idea: give three percent. You throw a big party, give three percent towards my zone. That helps feed people. So I mean, back to those. These are kind of the values I, I, I was raised with, learning about you know these, you know people in my family like like Label, like my uncle Label, who you know tried to give back and make the world a better place. Well, that's interesting. Well, I didn't know. Yeah, it's a big organization. But you're right. You know, um, we, you know, if I had many guests on the show, and they've once said that of the produce that America produces, which is a lot that a one-third is consumed, meaning all the apples you see on the, on the, when you go shopping, ooh, they're all perfect. Now, not all apples are perfect, but if they, they have a little nick in them or something, they throw them out, or they don't want to use them, they don't make it, and saying, well, who cares if there's a nick, some guy's hungry, who cares if it doesn't look like a perfect apple? Yeah. And there's so much food that is thrown out, like you say, in, in America, and it's a shame because people do need the food. It's a shame. I don't know. That's interesting. Well, you know, your good Jewish roots over here that that uh, has sustained a lot of people. Again, that's, you grow up with good values, then you can carry them out. What other legislation is going on, though, in the Albany County? We talked about the bus fares, and, which I think is important. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm focusing a lot on housing issues. Um, yeah. So... Uh, started a program called EPIC, the Eviction Prevention and Intervention Collaborative. So this idea, uh, basically we'll have um, people in housing court providing uh, legal counsel to people facing eviction. So we got some, uh, you know, I advocated and we secured funding from the county for that. The city of Albany chipped in and the program should start very soon. I think we're going to, you know, vote on, uh, vote on the RFP in, in January likely. And, you know, this really makes a difference. We saw, you know, we looked at the statistics, about 3% of tenants who are facing eviction had an attorney, but 95% of the landlords were facing, had, had an attorney. So, yeah, sure. you know, we want to we wanna even things out. Well, sure, it costs a lot of money to, yeah. I mean, if you're being evicted, it means you don't have money. So yeah. you don't have money, you're not going to afford a, you know, a good attorney for that. That's interesting. I didn't know that uh, legislation was happening. There's so much homeless, it just breaks my heart, you know, when I see people like that. Do you think it's worse today? I mean, uh, you know more statistics than I do. I mean, I just see a gut, you know, yeah. I look outside and I just see it's a shame people don't have a home to live in. I, I think your gut is right. I think it, it's definitely gotten worse. Homelessness is on the rise. I mean, we've seen, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. The housing costs have gone up a lot. You know, the rent, rent costs a lot more to rent an apartment. Uh, you have a lot more uh, mental health issues. I think substance abuse issues that you've seen, especially you know from COVID and in, in the in the aftermath. So you know another thing I'm I'm going to set I'm looking to do is to set up a a committee um, on homelessness where we bring in there's the Albany County Homeless Action uh, Committee I believe it's called um, and the um, Albany County Coalition on the Homelessness and they come out with a plan every five years. So a few years ago they came came out with a plan to you know, address or end homelessness. So we want to bring them in for conversations, look at that plan with them and say, you know, where have you made progress? Where are you falling short? And how can we work with you? You know, what what do we need? Do we, do we need, is it that we have a shortage of this many affordable housing units? If so, how do we get that done? Is it that we need supportive housing? You know, where you have services for people? Okay, well now how do we get funding from the state? You know, get some, some you know, secure some funding in the county to, you know, make these things happen. That's interesting. So you're really on the forefront of things because, I mean, really it's a national issue, which, you know, we're dealing with the homelessness. I mean, the, yeah. in California, it's terrible. I mean, my sister is a roving manager of hotel, and she says she goes to San Francisco, and she says the, the downtown, I mean, I guess there's pictures in it, but she firsthand saw, I mean, it's terrible, the whole blocks downtown that are people living in tents. And, yeah. You don't see it so much in the north as much because it's nice weather there. You can survive. 
Yeah, talking about a place like Chicago, they're having problems. And I'm from Chicago, and I'm you're not see, sleeping in the street in Chicago, I can tell you that much. they would be frozen by the, in the morning. So uh, it's interesting you're in the forefront of all these major issues. Uh, you're looking for, for, I mean, again, Albany County. Again, maybe you should even ask because people just, you know, don't know the government, what's available to them. And there's city, there's county, there's state, there's national, <laughs> so many yeah. different layers of government. You say, well, what's county, you know, and what are they doing? You know, what's the major focus of county government? Yeah, we all, all these governments at different levels have different roles. So the county uh, does a lot of things. Um, Human services programs is probably the biggest thing. So all all these social services programs, SNAP, Medicaid, temporary assistance, the county administers that. Also shelters, uh, county contracts with nonprofits to shelter uh, people who are homeless, which is why I think the county makes sense for the county to have a larger role in trying to address this homeless issue. You know, and the housing issues, the city has a role too. I mean, the city of Albany just passed an inclusionary zoning law to. In, ensure that more, higher percentage of units and developments are affordable. You know, I think zoning is important for, you know, part of the problem is we have a housing shortage. We need to encourage, you know, the development of more housing and especially affordable housing. So those things are, I think, a little bit more of the city role, but we can we can look at it the county, um, you know, providing that, you know, housing for people who are out on the street and the mental health services for them and substance use services and, you know, ways to get people to back on their feet. You know, one thing that I was always thinking, once you bring this up, that I know there's stories, you know, the Hasidim and Jewish stories in Europe, all the, what was happening, but they used it well. It's like, unfortunately, it's not a new issue. It's been always there, and people were poor in Europe, and they didn't have a place. And they'd always have, like, a, a big a room, I mean, I don't know exactly the dimensions, but just a place for homeless that they can... You know, just bed up. Hey, I'm I'm here. I don't have a place to stay. Here's a bunk or a cot, or they'd have like a like not a soup kitchen. They call it a hectish in Hebrew. You know, just saying. Well, you know, no one's looking. Like I say, ten forms. Do you have food or not? You know, there's some volunteers, or you know, like I say, there's so much produce going on. Here's a big pot of soup, and here's you know, you need a you know, we'll dish out to you. You don't have to fill out a form and ask for anything. Maybe that way I always thought that would be an interesting, yeah, you know, advice to, you know, with that because people are just, you know, just to flop in. Hey, okay, here's a, here's a room for you. I mean, we uh, do have shelters. You know, we have a lot of shelters in the area, especially in the city of Albany, that people can go into. And during the winter, it's code blue is what they call it when it's below 32 degrees, so they have to let everyone in. Um, but you know, there's still there's still barriers to some of them. Well, you know, yeah. people live in, or like you say, some people are just have such problems. Yeah. You know, they just need so much help, which I know that. I mean, who knows? I mean, it would would be a monumental task, really, of taking everybody in. And yeah. But there's something, you know, you're right. There's something has to be done. I know you're doing something on that f forefront. You know, I just, it's interesting because, you know, again, I say you have so many guests on, and the sheriff of Albany County is uh, Craig Apple. He's a very good person because, you know, again, that people are off the street and they're able to, you know, they don't have a place to go. He says, you want all these addicts? You want me to fill up the jail overnight? I could do it. I know where they all are. But what's going to gain? You know, I mean, it's going to cost the county money. It's not going to do them any help. And um, they just try to help people also. So yeah, that kind of idea. There's, you know, it's a big issue. It's a, it's a major issue today. Homelessness and yeah. you know people don't have food. But you know, again, you're trying, and that's very good that you're doing that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the sheriff's done done a, got a lot of good things, and he's really committed to the idea that um, you know addiction, and mental health issues. That's not a criminal matter. That's really a health health care matter. Yeah. And even put a homeless shelter in the jail, which, you know, when I first saw it was a little skeptical, really? you know, shelter, do people want to be in the jail? But, yeah. but it's all optional. It's, I think it's, it's yeah. voluntary for people, and I think it's, it's worked out really well. And, you know, it's gotten, bottom line, it's gotten people off the street into, you know, better situation, and they've moved on to... Yeah, instead of criminalizing housing. everything, you know, I know I've, 
again, I've dealt with people and I've gone to court for people advocating for them and think these people really aren't criminals, they just need help. And the judges in the system also in Albany County were very, very, you know, adm admirable to, and say, all right, we're not going to put the guy in jail. They just need to, you know, like you say, to, to learn and to be helped in certain different ways, just to go around criminalizing everybody and everything, you know, and just putting everybody in jail. It's, yeah. I don't know if they do it anywhere, but in any case, it's a, it's a good issue over here that, you know, people... People need help. That's the bottom line. There's a lot of help that needs to be. You're probably more than anyway. That's why you advocate. You think your neighborhood's probably poorer than anybody's, or? Um, yeah, it's it's among among one of the the poorest neighborhoods in in, uh, oh in Albany God. or in the region, definitely. Yeah, but you know, I think there's a lot of potential as well. Um, yeah, you know, people. There's it's a community. People care a lot about the community who live there. Um, but there's just, uh, you know, a lot of people are struggling too, and there's, you know, not a lot of resources. And what about, I mean, the jobs? They always say about, well, we talked about the co op at the beginning of the show. You know, that probably would have brought in some jobs also, or just revitalizing, because they're always talking yeah. about, I mean, I know because the Lubavitch is in Crown Heights, and I've seen it going from, I took. When I started bringing me across, I was, what did that place is, uh, get killed over here? And now I say you buy a house for a million, they say a million, buy a garage, it's a million. Yeah. You know, they just built up. So a lot of cities have done that. I don't know if Albany, I mean, are you part of Lark Street? Is that part of your area? Uh, no, not Lark Street, more like South Pearl Street, yeah. Mansion neighborhood, but also all of downtown below Eagle Street, which is... That's kind of a fancier area, but also struggling. You know, the businesses are struggling. It kind of relies a lot on state workers who aren't there all the time anymore. I think we need yeah. to get beyond that and build up that neighborhood. But I think, you know, we've seen some good things. There's this interesting uh, initiative, the Community Investment Trust on South Pearl Street. It's basically um, community to get together is buying uh, the Coliseum. It's like a kind of a, this mini mall and renovating it and the community will have ownership over it and businesses will be there and if this initiative works they can expand and buy more buildings so you know it'll allow uh, you know locals to really start businesses um, help the economy so you know what we want to do we don't just want to bring in investment from the outside we need people to live there to be able to have an ownership stake in the community and invest and you know build up themselves yeah, important. well then you hire people also from the community yeah. besides that and that's even an added thing then you get people with real jobs so that's interesting you know because they're saying that things he can and have changed in certain that you know we were talking about the problems the homelessness and all that yeah. on the other hand there are communities that have turned around and turned to be um, real viable viable communities with shops and you know, yeah and it's sad because you look at like South Pearl Street used to be the economic center of this region, right? You know, mm -hmm. I look at pictures back in the day. My family actually had a, a furniture business on South Pearl Street, oh, really? Breslau Brothers Furniture, and uh, you know now it's it's like it's empty, right? It's yeah. it's really struggling, but it could go back to what it was. Yeah, I, I think it could. We'd, I think we'd we'd all love to see that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people have done. I mean, like I say, certain cities, New York is. You know, and no one wanted to be in Brooklyn and, you know, just even, again, the lower echelons, and now yeah. it's hoi toi, you know. And you know like it's yeah, I want to add, I think there's a way to do it, too, where a lot of the people who, you know, don't have a lot of money or are living there aren't, aren't displaced. You know, oftentimes, you know, things get gentrified, they get fancier, they're nicer, but then a lot of the people can't afford to live there anymore. So yeah. I think we can find a way to improve things and make the community nicer for everyone who lives there and bring an investment. But people aren't pushed out, right? There's protections for them. Or even better, if a lot of the people who live there now own the community, if they own those houses, then they're not pushed out. Then they actually benefit from, from this economically. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, we're almost out of time. Sam, on a future note, we're talking about what you're doing the present. Do you have any um, visions for yourself personally? I mean, Albany County Legislature is a beautiful thing and you're doing a lot for the community but you're young and I see you're intelligent and you're well liked like you say you don't even have any competition and you think so 
You could be uh, more. So I'll be on your campaign well, committee over uh, here. I won't make any announcements now, but I'll, I'll keep you updated. But you know, right now, I'm excited. I'm starting a new four-year term in the county legislature. Right. But you know, if given the opportunity, uh, you know, love to be in a, a, a larger role where I think I can make more of an impact. Uh, you know, I ran for assembly once in the past. You know, uh, I'd love to be in a position. You know, where, even, I, where I can you know do even more with this. Care. But I also feel like my current role. There's a lot of work to do. Um, and I, I believe I can make more of a difference right here, right now. No, of course, yeah, you're doing great things, and I think you are on the cutting edge because sometimes you see politicians just, you know, going through the motions, and you know, I know people in the different areas of government, and you ask them what they're plan to do. Well, I'm in my position for 20 years, and, you know, and uh, you know they don't really have any vision, and you have a lot of visions to to go forward for. So that's why I see you can. That's what I'm saying. That uh, I think you can add a lot more to the, to the not only the small community, but just even in bigger scale to go further. So that's going to be, well, we'll see. We'll yeah. uh, get you back on the Jewish view and yeah. bigger and better things over here. And I want to thank you for being here, Sam Fine again of Albany County, legislator, and doing great things for the community. And, and you know, of course, on the Jewish view, using your Jewish values to help the. The, the overall community, if not necessarily the Jewish people. Yeah. All yeah, right. that, that's what I try to do. Yeah. All right. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. And um, thank you for being on the Jewish View. Thank you.